I've had many, many people ask me, what can the QC motor generator really do? What's, what's the peak output of this device? Can I run things in my home? Will it help me get off the grid? All these are the right questions, but what I really need to do is explain to you how the technology is working. I told you before, uh, I believe in one of my previous videos, that uh, the coil sets uh, there, there is 12 pounds of copper, 12 coils, each one's about a pound weight each. There's 12 pounds of copper that power has to go through and be pulsed simultaneously. All 12, uh, all 12 coils pulse exactly the same time. This is the ultimate pulse motor and I think this is going to set the standard by which all future pulse motors are going to operate and I'm going to explain to you why. Now here I've just borrowed from the Quanta Hybrid uh, the axial flux generator. Uh, the two magnetic rotors here are actually the uh, magnetic coupling for the rotoverter, but they worked out fine for this. But as you can see on each rotor, there's four layers of magnets, two layers of N52s and two layers of N42s. So we're talking about some serious lines of flux cutting through those coils to generate some uh, pretty incredible power. Uh, this thing will run and run and run on very very little power because the, the coil sets are independent circuits and they accumulate uh, electromagnetic energy until they reach a point of saturation and at which point you, the demand for amperage plummets uh, by a factor of 10. So if you started running this thing at, uh, let's say, 1 amp, in, uh, in the time that it takes to load these coils up to the point where they're fully saturated with electromagnetic uh, flux energy, then uh, it's going to drop from 1 amp down to 100 milliamps, and it'll run at 100 milliamps and still run at the same RPM and still give you the same torque for outputting power from the axial flux generator or whatever you've got connected to this. I just did this as a test just to show some examples of the capability. Now the interesting thing about this is uh, that I think you'll find very very interesting is the powering device. Uh, let me come over here and show you and there it is. That little thing. One 9 volt battery. Let's see if we get the glare off of this. 9.16 volts. And it's running the machine. Now, obviously, this is not under load at this time, except for whatever I'm dumping in this flash cap. It's a 330 volt, 450 uh, microfarad flash cap. And it's just about 25 volts from the little 9 volt battery. But you say, well, what about the amperage? What are we doing with that? Let me just connect the camera here to the tripod. Yeah, I'm pretty jumpy here. Okay, here's the, here's the amperage draw from the 9 volt battery. And it's pretty much well, it's pretty much zero. So we're talking about microamps. And yet, microamps involved from 9.14 volts over here to nearly 25 volts over here. And, uh, and it will power load. Yesterday, I used another one of these Duracell 9 volts. And I ran it for about an hour and fully charged these two uh, six volt lead acid lantern batteries brought them up to full charge which was uh, about uh, 6.5 6.6 volts each they're they're connected in series now because I'm going to show you how this little battery will charge those big batteries okay we're connecting up now except for the uh, positive lead here because I just wanted to show you what the the battery voltage is of these two 
little uh, lead acid batteries in series it's 12.88 volts with with 12 pounds of copper having to be loaded up from that one little 9 volt battery and operate 11 pounds of rotor weight we're talking about stainless steel aluminum polycarbonate neodymium magnets 11 pounds of mass and 12 pounds of copper to do the work from that one little battery and it'll power it for nearly two days that's that's just unheard of well it's because of this because of the amp draw it's it's microamps it reads zero and yet we can fully charge up some other batteries okay let's do that make the connection Now we're up to 1291. Drawing a little bit more than zero amps. Twelve ninety three at this point. So you see, the, the voltage is rising, charging up lead acid batteries from a tiny little 9 volt battery. The energy con conversion efficiency of this is just absolutely incredible. Up to 1297 already, so it's still climbing. The stored magnetic flux that's in those coils uh, is recycled over and over and over and that's what keeps that amperage down to almost nothing. I mean here we are in a full charging state and it's not even a hundred milliamps of draw. It's about uh, 40 maybe 50 milliamps of draw from a 9 volt battery <laughs> to charge two lead acid batteries and now we're up to 1298 this is why I wanted to show you on a small scale so you'd have a point of relativity to uh, to realize what it can do as it is ramped up with uh, higher input so that's it I hope you get a better understanding of how this operates now because if you're putting in more then this kind of power then you're gonna get more of this kind of action <laughs> on the output side uh, so it's just gonna scale up but I had to show you on a small scale like this so that uh, again so that you would better grasp you know the efficiency of what's going on here this power conversion efficiency is is uh, some of the highest I've I've ever seen and uh, definitely the highest that I've ever uh, encountered on the machines that I've I've uh, designed and built and uh, so here it is and we want to put these in the hands of anyone who wants them and uh, you know it still can be powered by another device like another motor or rotoverter and in the case of the rotoverter it's not a standard motor just like this is not a standard generator so you know for those that say well you can't take a motor and run a generator you're just gonna get losses of course you would if that was a standard motor and it was a standard generator but these aren't and you can see now why they're not thank you oh also I forgot to mention that uh, uh, some would think that these caps are pretty much running it but uh, Actually, they're not. Not even connected. Velcroed on. Uh, they were just part of the Quanta Hybrid on other experiments. I just left them on so you didn't have to see the Velcro on them. <laughs> A piece of white plastic. <laughs> That's it. And because the rest of it is quite simple. What it's doing, how it's doing it, and, uh, and so effective.